Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is again the chicken doctor himself. Thank you for everyone who has followed me on my social media platforms. Ask the chicken doctor is the show we have started today, and this is the very first session of this show. This show will be involving many questions from farmers I interact with every day and also questions from social media platform YouTube Twitter Facebook WhatsApp Telegram so what we shall be doing is expound on these questions for the benefit of a common farmer so special greetings to all the farmers in the different WhatsApp groups, Kasangat Poultry Farmers, Gaza Poultry Farmers, Mitiana Poultry Farmers, Masaka Poultry Farmers, Wakiso Poultry Farmers, Poultry 1 up to Poultry 16, then Poultry Farmers South Africa, Poultry Farmers Zambia, and all the Poultry Farmers groups in Kenya. Thank you for all being part of the Chicken Doctor Farmers Groups. Then for the Facebook Farmers, special thanks to all the Facebook groups we have over 20 in Uganda. Then two Facebook groups in Kenya and Black Poultry Farmers in South Africa and Poultry Farmers in Zambia. So thank you very much. and. All your question is always raised to the chicken doctor. Will be handled in details for the benefit of any other farmer, especially those who are starting poultry. So, who is the chicken doctor? Uh, most of you know me by the name of the chicken doctor himself, but my real name um Dr. Sechi Wunga Rogers, a graduate who did a bachelor's degree in veterinary medicine in Materi University, but also continued to Israel and a specialist in chicken or in poultry, not only treating but also in management, uh, all things including construction of houses, making plans structure designs, supplementation designs, feeding and everything. So I'm an all-rounder specialist as far as poultry is concerned. In this show, you are going to have a different thing in that we always want a lot to concentrate a lot on the information from maybe Google or uh, in books. But I'm going to make sure I rely a lot on the physical, practical information I get from the field, whereby all the information I'm going to be getting from here is going to be very applicable, whereby it is practical and it is something I have tried, I have done it practically, and it has worked. So be sure that you are going to get the best out of this show. So uh, the show, I repeat, it is Ask the Chicken Doctor himself. What is expected from you? As a farmer or as a viewer, feel free to ask any question about chicken and you will be answered for your own benefit and for the benefit of others like you. So I appreciate for all those who asked for a show like this and have decided to start it from today. Thank you very much and uh, let me go straight to the first question I received. So, the first question came from Harriet of Nateti, and Harriet was asking, I said, good evening, chicken doctor. Is there a profit in poultry farming? I know this is not only Harriet who is asking this question. Very many of you are asking, especially people who have not yet started chicken farming. Many are asking, 
can I make profit from chicken farming? So uh, this one, I will answer everyone who is watching me that indeed there is a lot of profits in chicken farming. But just like any other business, the profits will only come when you do things right. And the purpose of this program is to teach you how to do things right as far as chicken is concerned. So Ariet, I will urge you to always keep up following, watch all the episodes of Ask the Chicken Doctor, use my phone, and for those who didn't have my phone, it is on the screens, but I'll repeat it here, it is plus two five six seven seven nine five one five three. Five zero, and the airtel line is plus two five six seven zero four five nine six seven nine six. All you can get me from Twitter, you can get me from Facebook, you can get me from from WhatsApp. All that information is displayed on the screens. So the answer is very clear: profits are there, and a lot of profits but you have to do things right and i'm telling you this not because i want you to join uh poultry farming but it's from the experience i have in chicken farming on average uh, every day i visit a minimum of two to three poultry farms ranging from farms of 200 birds up to farms of 1.5 million birds so I've seen it all in small numbers and big numbers, and I have done the economics of all. So by the time I say profits are there in poultry farming, it is the reality. And once you start doing poultry farming, following the right steps, trust me, you will never regret. You'll have the profits. Hope Harriet from Natet, you have been answered. In case you have any other related questions, continue sending the questions and they will be answered thank you very much and our second question came from Mozaibi. i don't know if that is the right pronunciation of your name but you are from black poultry farmers south africa you asked you said hello chicken doctor happy new year and what do I, what, what, I think she wanted to mean that what do I, what am I supposed to be having to start poultry farming? So in other words, she's asking for the requirements for someone to engage in poultry farming. So that is not a very brief question. It is something which is a bit wide, but I always tell people in my poultry trainings that you don't see poultry farming as something different from any other business. So poultry farming is a business, just like any other business, there are things which you must have, all the requirements of anyone must have to start poultry farming. So I'm going to answer you, and your name is hard to pronounce, but I'm sure you are going to, you are getting what I'm responding to you, but you are from black poultry farmers south africa so number one requirement of anybody inspiring to do poultry farming you must have the interest so interest is number one there is nothing you can do without interest trust me even if it is any other business without interest you cannot make it first of all you must be interested in what you are supposed to do you must be interested just like the way I decided to leave all the other things I studied, including the pigs, the cows, the horses, uh, the, the, the donkeys, the wildlife, and I said, my interest is in chicken. So you must have the interest to do poultry farming. That's number one. So after you have the interest, uh, you need to have the information. So you don't just jump and start poultry farming without good information about it. 
So you must have the information about this whole thing of how to fund it. Where do you get the information from things like this? If you follow a show like this, by the end of the time, you will have the information about poultry farming. There are poultry books. You can read the poultry books. And by the end of it all, you'll have some information about poultry farming. You can ask very many people. There are other people like me in all the other countries like who know more about poultry. You can get from them. Then you can also ask other chicken, poultry far ch chicken farmers who have been there before you and they give you their experience with chicken. But we say that in the first place, it must be interest. Once you have the interest, you can move mountains. So, and now you have the information, but you can't have all the information in one day. Sometimes once you have the interest and you have gathered some information about it, I have given the, an assurance of the profits, you can start, then you get more information as you move on and as you learn on job. So we said interest, said you must have the information, then number two, uh, under information, you must ask yourself, how prepared are you? But the preparation in this issue must be from the information you have gathered about chicken farming. I'll share with you an example of a number of poultry farmers who have been unable to completely feed their birds. And you find someone has raised birds from one day up to four months and is saying, hey old doctor, get me a buyer. Reason I'm unable to feed this chicken up to lay. But this farmer has invested a lot from day one. Vaccinations, feeding, litter, the heat, the brooding session is so, so hectic, but someone has persevered all this, but is selling the birds at four months. Meaning, he's just remaining with two weeks to make profit but he has run out of funds and is selling. So the cause of that is this person did not invest a lot in getting the information about what he was doing. So you must always be prepared to make enough research, get the information. Because briefly, uh, we, I know question, questions about that will come, but you have to know what is the major uh, expense in poultry farming. You say it is feed. We like when you have feed, you can handle the other thing. So you ask yourself, how much feed do I do I have to like how much feed must be in place to raise the birds up to the point of lay in case of layers? Reason because once they start to lay, they will be able to look after themselves because you are getting eggs which eggs have profits. But before laying the chick stage. The grower stage, those stages are very hectic, which any farmer must be prepared for. So, we know that a layer bird will eat around 2 kilograms, 2 to 2.5 kilograms, from day one up to around two months. Those are eight weeks. So, once you know that, you know that I have the money I'm going to use to look after my layers up to two months. Then you get to know, and in this period of, in this period of time, they will eat the chicks mash so you must know the price of each kilo of chick mash you might pay by number of kilos every bird you eat which is 2 to 2.5 then you multiply by the total number of birds you have in your flock then you will know that i will need uh, averagely this amount of food to feed my birds from day one up to two months then after that you will have the information that from two months up to four and a half months, those are 18 weeks. So 10 weeks, from eight weeks to 18 weeks, the layer bird will eat between seven kilograms to 7.5. So when you add on the feed eaten in a layer stage, I mean the chick stage to that of the grower stage, that will be around nine to 10 kilograms per bird. So if you have 100 birds, you just multiply, you end up with a ton. If you have 1,000 birds, you just end up with 10 tons, so something like that. So once you have that information with you, you cannot reach a point and say, I have failed to feed my birds. Because you prepared well, you had the interest, you had the information, and you had the facts about poultry farming. 
So that's number two. You must have the information and in, among the information, you must have facts about a particular subject you're going to go into. Number three, also it falls in information. That's when you make a decision. You say, yes, I'm interested in poultry farming. I have the information about poultry farming, but now I'm going to decide on which kind of poultry farming I'm going to do. But you cannot decide on that without having the information. So there are very many things you look at here. One, you know the different systems of keeping poultry. There is the depleter system whereby the birds are on the floor. You have litter and they just put the feeders and drinkers, they're eating from there. Number two, we have the battery cage system whereby the birds are in the cages confined there. That's where they eat from and they live from there and everything is from there. So you have to decide, do I go for free range system, I mean for deep litter system or the battery cage system? There is free range system whereby the birds are left to feed, move, feed, then return later. So are you going for free range, deep litter or battery cage system? Then from the systems, there are birds. Are you going for broilers, birds that are kept for meat, what you commonly call the white birds? Then we have layers. Are you going for layers? Birds which lay. Then there are those who say, I want to go for breeding all the parent stock. So you, after getting the information, you will decide which kind of chicken do you want to do. Then after, you can even go into details. Do you want to produce eggs or you want to brood? Raise the chicken from day one up to two months, then you sell to those who cannot brood. But you cannot make serious decisions if you don't have the information. That's how important the information part is when it comes to decisions in poultry farming. Hope we are together. So, interest, information, but under information, we have facts, and then you have to make a decision. So, number four is just like any other business, you must have the What do you have that is going to help you start up? Chicken is, are not going to be like in air or water. Though, sometimes they can be layered on water. And I was in Israel and I saw some houses put up on, near, on, on water just to produce droppings which they used to, to make other things from. But in a real sense, uh, you need the land. So uh, if you study the dynamics of population very well, you discover that we have an increasing number of middle class uh, income earners. And now that always comes with limited land around the urban and peri-urban areas. So you find that now the obvious business which people can go to as far as farming is concerned is poultry because it does not need a lot of land. It's not like uh, you're going to do uh, zero free, free ranging of cattle or what you call the, the paddock king. You don't have that land around the urban or very urban areas. People have, uh, if someone has a big piece of land, in most cases it's around 100 by 100. But most of the people of our age always have 50 by 100 or less. So you find out, you have to ask yourself, what can you do on such a piece of land? So you answer yourself that poultry farming is a very, very practical business as far as such plots of land is concerned. So land is very key. You must have land. You must know, where am I going to cut out this business from? Are you going to rent? Because what very many people don't know that around urban centers, there are people without houses, without land, but what they do, they, they, like they, they rent out poultry houses. You pay for a month, you pay for a year, you pay for eight years to do your business. Then after, you can raise the money from such a business to buy your own land. So you might not need to own your piece of land. That's, that's the, the practical part of it in Uganda. I don't know how it is in Kenya, I don't know how it is in Tanzania or South Africa. You tell me, we share on the platforms. But here in Uganda, there are very many people who have bought the houses for rent. So you can just go and pay them for a period of time. Then you go on with your poultry business.
So you must have the land. You must have the house. So the land is not enough, but the house. But the house, I will always keep bringing the issue of information because I have serious examples why it is so much important. I have a friend uh, who asked me to go and inspect the houses. So he had constructed a poultry house for the fiancé, but it was supposed to be a surprise, a gift on her birthday. So I went, but to my surprise, instead of constructing a poultry house, the person had constructed a mall, whereby uh, even it had a balcony, tiles. So the price of constructing that poultry house could build around eight similar poultry houses. But after inspecting the house, my conclusion was it does not meet the standard of a poultry house. We had to break what he invested in so much to meet the standards. So sometimes you don't have to rush. You don't have to start without information. So make sure your poultry house is designed right. Sometimes you go to a poultry farm and the principles were not followed. As these programs go on, I will teach about the orientation of a poultry house. And if you can, you can go on my YouTube channel. You look for that, that topic, orientations and setup of a standard poultry house. You will know that to construct a poultry house, you must put it up in the east-west orientation, whereby the eastern is closed, western is closed, the north and the south are open for aeration. Then you also read about other things, like you are not supposed to plant fruit trees around the poultry house. Reason? Because they will attract a lot of wild birds, things like mangoes, they will do that. And wild birds come with a lot of infections, like a Newcastle, Gumboro, to your birds. Because for them, they are resistant to those diseases, but the chicken we are keeping are not resistant. So do away with fruit trees around the poultry house, and always have things like, uh, like pine, which don't attract a lot of wild birds. And also another thing, fruit, fruit trees will attract flies, and flies also do a lot of spread of infections to the poultry. So, but you cannot do all that when you don't have the information. I've reached very many farms, and the reason they give you for having fruits around the poultry house, they say, uh, they told me uh, chicken need cool environment, just like a human. So we are trying to put up sheds. For what? For our chicken. So things don't work like that. We always have the right information before you do something. Then you have to know, house, how do you construct this house? As I said, a poultry house is totally different from a human house. Poultry don't need a house actually, they need a shelter. Once they have a shelter with poor, with very good aeration, then you can adjust on a few things. That's why you reach a farm with just wood, wooden structures, is performing at a 90%. And you find someone with a complete designed house is performing at 60%. So it's not about a beautiful house, but does it make it a standard? That's what makes it beautiful. I think for those who follow me, the farmer who won the best chicken farmer's prize of last quarter is someone who uses jerry cans as drinkers, who, use, who build his structures in wood, is a deep reader farmer, but the chicken had laid for over one year, but still performing above 90% egg production. So sometimes it's not about the structures and the money you put in, but how right you do the thing. But you cannot do all that without the right information. That's how strong information is. You find that information is the center of everything. It will be coming in, coming back and back because it is a very, very general thing. So that is a poultry house. Then after that, uh, you will you will have to you have to know which kind of chicken you're going to have. So chicken is also a requirement. You must have the chicken. Of late, we have a scarcity of chicken. I'll give an example. Between Feb and May, I was supposed to inspect over eighty thousand young birds from day one up when they have 
have laid because I offer that service whereby I come and visit you maybe on a weekend, Saturday, I see what your buddies are doing, advise what you can change, what you can do better, prevent you from getting infection. It's very important. You don't have to treat prevention is better. So, but out of the 80 I had to inspect, it is only less than 18,000 we have been able to get all what we are assured of getting. So there is a scarcity of chicks. So don't rush and start build the house, buy the feed, book the, the vaccines. Then after you go and book chicks and they say, we have no chicks. You'll be able to get in June. For example, now I know all the hatcheries in Uganda. The earliest you can have chicks, actually apart from only one hatchery, but the high earliest you can have chicks now is going to be in April. Others are in June. People have booked up to that date. So there's always a scarcity of chicks, especially due to this problem of avian flu, whereby they ban the, the, the importation of chicken from Netherlands, from Belgium, and other places. So you have to make sure you are assured of the chicks. You have booked. So once you are sure, then you can go on with other things. So that's about chicken. So chicken, you must be the numbers. Next, equipments. Um, chicken will not just be in the houses without, without equipment. You cannot be at your home without plates, without cups, without glasses. You must have some things to make you run in your house. So, chicken will need drinkers. Chicken will need feeders. Chicken will need laying nests in clothes you are going to use them. They will need litter, uh, heat sources. So, all that. I will go into the details of everything as we go on. Since this is just an introduction and so you need all that but are you are you ready i have you been able to prepare for all that so equipments are very key uh, out of i think 80 80 out of all the farms that you visited 80 percent of the farmers have a problem in equipments and this is not only in uganda i have seen it on the farms i visited in kenya and other countries you find it's like we all had the same teacher who confused us about everything. You reach a farm and you ask how many feeders you have. Farmer will say 20. How many drinkers? Again, 20. So farmers have a mindset that as someone must have a plate and a cup, that the feeders must be equal to the number of drinkers, which is not right. Otherwise, a drinker of the same size as a feeder can, can support three feeders. So for these normal yellow feeders, it will take 25 buds, but a drinker of that same size will take 75 buds. So it's about in a ratio of 1 to 3, but do you know about the numbers? Do you know how to calculate the numbers needed and the equipment needed vis-a-vis -vis the numbers? Do you know how many playing nests do you need in a house of 1,000 buds? All that information must be at the back of your mind. So that's what that's equipment. Then, for people who do broilers, there is something you must not forget. That's the market. Also for layers there, but it is worse when it comes to broiler farmers. I've seen farmers, they call you chicken doctor, I have a problem. I have the heaviest birds, but I don't have where to sell them. You reach a farm and the guy is inside the gate, but even the immediate neighbor is not aware that the guy has buds. But he's saying, I cannot find market. So always let's plan, let's do marketing, find the business. Do marketing, let everyone know about your business. And plan ahead because for broilers, every day that passes when it has to leave, for example, in Uganda, the average is around six weeks. After six weeks, every feed it is eating, it is almost a loss, unless you have other plans of, of setting when birds are heavier. But if you don't have any other plans, every feed it is eating after the sixth week, these birds are eating your profits up. So always, for broiler farmers, market must be a very important aspect. For layer farmers, it is very important, but I always I teach them what you call continuous production, because you don't want to lose the market you have created. 
that's why I always inform them if you are going to do 1000 birds, have around two batches, 500 birds each. Then, for those who are big farmers, have very many flocks of different ages. So that as you are offlaying these birds, you have others that are going to start to lay. You have those in the grower stage, you have the brooder. In that, every time you have eggs, that's how you're going to be able to consolidate your market base. So, the market issue is a very serious aspect. You can have a tick on all the others, then you fail on the issue of market. So that is very key, always make sure you have the market for the products you produce. The same to Croiler farmers, all the breeds which are mixed, uh, you must be able, you must know where you're going to sell. At least have, be sure of around a 70%. Then you will get the 30% as you move on. So that is also a very serious aspect. Another um, requirement you need in a poultry house are workers. Just like any other business, human resource is a very key aspect when it comes to poultry farming. Where are you going to get the workers from? Which kind of work, work are they going to have? So I will teach you in our continuous programs how to manage farm human resource. But one of the things I've learned practically on farms, it's not a good idea to pay your workers at the same time. I'll give you a simple story about that. I've had around four instances whereby someone pays the workers today and tomorrow they all say we are leaving. Because they interact more between themselves than the way they interact with you. So what can you do if workers wake up in the morning and they say, we are all leaving. You have the chicken, they have to feed, they have to get water, they have to have the egg, you have to collect the eggs and all other things. But now they are saying, we are all leaving. What can you do as a farmer? So, but if you have different days of clearing their pay, they cannot say we are all living at the same time because each one will say, I can't live without getting my pay. And that the other one is getting, that one is about to get. So have a few clusters among your workers. You can just make an arrangement between you and the manager and see how that can be done. But I will go into details of that as we go on. But human resource is a very key aspect. How are you planning to treat your workers? I have a farm in his goat I take care of. But I like the way this guy is treating the workers. The workers own the business. To an extent of them saying, don't give us pay so that the birds can get treatment. Then later, after things are well, you can give us the pay. That's how much these, these guys are committed to see these birds perform. So are you treating your workers like a family? All you are treating your workers like a nobody. I know also another worker. I can't start mentioning names, but I have I know a worker who buys posho for workers and is and he says, Why should I give you oil? Why should I give you firewood? I pay you. Use your own income to do that. So sometimes you have to measure the kind of investment you have and how much you're going to spend on the human resource that is going to handle that. I know of another farmer who said when an egg breaks, no one is supposed to eat that egg until when he sees the egg. But sometimes it takes a month without coming, which a farm is smelling, but they are keeping the broken eggs for him to come and see. So it's not a good idea. Have a plan of how you are going to treat your workers. Okay? But you must strike a what a balance because I've also seen workers who were given authority to sell the broken eggs and get some money, but they break more to earn more. Someone will enter the house with a mission. I must be out with a tray of broken eggs. So you will have eight and break the others to make a tray. So you must have you have must strike a balance on your go and on the way you're going to handle workers at the farm. So human resource is a very key. But in addition to that, have a plan to inspire your human resource. Inspire them, let them be motivated. And once they are, always improve them. Through trainings, 
through having the right people around them, after one year or two, you will have a very serious, strong human resource at the farm. Another requirement is also you must have in plan records. Record keeping is very key. You must have the record tools. What are you going to use? Are they going to be books? Is it going to be a laptop? Is it going to be a smartphone? Have it in plan depending on how big the project you want to carry out is. That's also a requirement of a poultry farm. Then we shall have, there are also other, other requirements like a farm doctor, uh, other things are there. there are, like I know also a farm which has farm pastor. Every Monday they have to pray. So others you come on, you add on other requirements of a farm, but uh, in case of other things that will come in our next programs, to expand on the other requirements you have to look at before starting a poultry farm. So I have answered uh, this client or this farmer from the black poultry farmers in South Africa. Others, you'll have them from the YouTube, you'll have them on from Facebook pages, from WhatsApp groups, from Twitter. So, And also you have my uh, contacts, you can always give me a call and we talk in details. I tell farmers, if you have an urgent problem, actually let me mention this before I go on the next question. If you have an urgent problem, don't just put on WhatsApp. I receive over 2,000 messages every day on WhatsApp asking for help. So sometimes I cannot answer all. But if it's an emergency, your chickens are dying at high rate, you, are, you, you don't know what to do. Give me a call. Say, I have put a problem A on the WhatsApp. I will come and give special attention. Special attention. Otherwise, it might be so hard for me to look through all the 2,000 uh, messages on WhatsApp. Because the WhatsApp groups are too many. For now, we have over 100, all combined. And each has more than 256 farmers. So you find that it's always hard, then plus other groups which are known for poultry, plus the questions from Facebook, the questions from YouTube, the questions from, uh, there are some questions that someone would just call, uh, like I saw you on TV, uh, you, were, you were speaking about this and this and this, how can I be helped? So sometimes I'm overwhelmed, and in case of emergencies, you have my number, I always speak. Just get my number, call, we talk all I hope you out in details. That was the questions from South Africa. Okay, uh, this other question for today, uh, which is the last question. Uh, it is from Imi. Imi is from Masaka, and that's the place where I'm born. So he's asking what, like, what kind of birds makes better profits so that question is a bit tricky because all the birds will give you profits but it will depend on what you need and the environment in which you are and the reason you are making you are doing those birds for example croilers are very good birds everyone will say croilers are good but from my research because actually i made a special research about croilers i wrote a book about croilers and i discovered if you are doing croilers for eggs it's not a very good idea but if you are doing croilers for meat that's a good idea and i discovered why uh like how I, I will speak more about it but literally a croiler is a bird that was developed from a combination of a of a broiler bird and a local bird so it has genes of a broiler chicken and genes of a local bird so it grows quickly like a broiler it is resistant to disease like a local chicken its appearance is like a local chicken somehow and its laying abilities are not so good because it is, doesn't have a lot of properties for a layer bird. So when you, go it, when you do it for laying, the percentages will always be somehow low compared to someone who will do a croiler for meat. But for meat, it is very good. So that's when you make it and say, I want for eggs. No, let me think again. But if it's for meat, I can go ahead. So layers, I have told you, 
that I have, I did some economics about a layer chicken to a level whereby I know how much profit you have by each egg that is produced. So you will sit and get it and say, if I have these birds, these eggs, this profit. That's when you can say, I have the market for eggs, I have a bakery, I have someone to sell to, I have a school, I'll do layers. Then broilers, you say, I don't have enough money with me, I have a shortcut, I have very small capital. But since broilers and bureau has been six weeks, I sell, bring in others, six weeks I sell, bring in others, it is a better deal since I don't have that a lot of amount to feed the birds up to four months of lay. So sometimes all these can work out, but it depends on the information you have on each aspect. So I will answer you by saying all birds are good, all birds can give you profits, all birds can be reared, but what do you need as a person? You need to be get some good guidance on how this can be done and once you do that you will be able to do any kind of bad depending on what you feel can work for you so uh, those are the questions we had for today and i will stop there for now but we are going to keep doing this every friday we are going to be doing this and always make sure to follow uh, it's going to be very interesting because I'm going to be getting very many questions. Some of them will be the same that which I have to refer from our old shows. But I welcome you officially on the Ask the Chicken Doctor show. Episode 1 has been today and we're going to have numerous uncountable episodes. Thank you very much. Thank you for subscribing. I remain the Chicken Doctor himself. <music>